Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we will create a Spring Boot application using Spring Data JPA and Spring MVC. Normally we will create a web page where you will try to add some data in database, we will try to fetch something. So let's, let's see how do we do that. We will create a project here, fresh project, I would say new Spring Startup Project, give a name to it, I would say Spring Boot JPA and then I will say next. Now here what are the things we need? Now first of all we are making a web project so I would say web. Now what type of database I want? So of course we will be using JPA so we will select JPA here. And then what type of database I want? Now we can use any database we want. Example we can use MySQL, we can use Postgres. Now just for this example I will be using a in-memory database which is we, we can use H2 database which is in-memory database. And of course we can use any database you want. And then we will click on next because these three things we need then we'll click on next and we'll click on finish the moment you click on finish you will get your project of course it will take some time so yes we got our project and you can see we got our project which is called as boot jpa now what exactly i want now first thing i want here is to work with h2 right uh, in fact if you if i just want to show you what exactly i want i basically i want an application where i can add aliens i can fetch aliens so maybe i i want to add new aliens. In aliens I will be having two parameters. One is I will be having the uh, name of the alien and then I will be having in an ID for the alien. So just to show you that I will need a class. I will put that in a model package and the class name would be alien and in this class alien I need to, I just need two things. One is AID and the second thing is the name and for this we need getters and setters and I also want to implement two string method here so I will say so we got two strings. So we got a id a name. We got get setters for that and two string method. So this is the this is the class I want to work with. Now what I want is I want a page where I will be able to add those values. So in the resources, in in fact inside main, I want a folder where I would call it as web app. And inside this web app, I will be creating a JSP. So I would say JSP and I will name this JSP as home.jsp. This is where I will be putting my values. Now what are the fields I need? I need a form tag where I will be able to add those, I will be able to put those two values. So this we want, right? We want a form and a user will enter two values, a id, a name. The moment I click on submit, it will call add alien. Right? This aliens will be added in database. And of course we can create one more form where, where you can fetch data. And of course if you can do adding, you can fetch data, uh, you can fetch it by yourself as well, right? That will be your assignment. But I want to make it work. The moment I click on submit, it should be able to add alien. In fact, just to run this application, let's see what happens if I if I just run this code. So I would say Spring Boot, uh, this project run as Spring Boot app. So let me open my browser and I would say localhost colon 8080. And if I say enter, you can see it says page not found. And even if you try to access home.js, but let's try that. And you can see we still got error because you need a controller to call that page, right? That's how Spring MVC works. You need to make it flow. And to do that, of course, we need a controller and we have not done that yet. So let's build a controller here. So I'm basically trying to, you know, create the basic stuff for us. New class, this will be a controller. And I would say this is alien controller. Name can be anything, doesn't matter. And I want to put this in a package called as controller. And inside this controller, I want to have a method so I would say public string home and this will return home.jsp. Now when I want to call this method, first of all, I want to make this as a controller because this, this, without this it will not work. And here I want to say at request mapping and in this I want to specify the path. So whenever I, co I call the home page, it should call home.jsp. Oh, I missed one thing. It should be double quotes here. Okay, everything seems good. Now, if I run this project, let's say it is working. So I will just relaunch the application and I will go back there and say enter. Oh, you can see it is still not working because we missed one thing. If you remember, uh, we are yet to add the Jasper, right? When you are working with JSP, we need to add a palm file. Which, uh, we need to add one more dependency, which is Jasper. And how do we get that? We just go to MVN repository, search for Tomcat Jasper. This is what you want. And out of this as well, I want 8.5.30. The problem is 8.5.31 is not working properly in my machine. So I'm using this one. That's fine if you, even if you go for 3.1. Okay, it's done. And let me just relaunch it once again. 
I'll go back to my browser and if I say enter, you can see we got a page, right? So this thing is working perfectly. It's very simple stuff, nothing fancy, right? So what is happening now is the moment you call, when you, when you, the moment you say home page, it is calling home.jsp. I mean, the moment I say slash, it is calling home.jsp. It's working perfectly. And now what I want is the moment I, moment I click on submit, it should take these two values and add it in database. But hold on, where is our database? Where is our table, right? That's a question. Now, first of all, how will your Spring Boot knows that you want to connect with H2? So H2 the database, right? Now, first of all, you need to enable H2 database because it is in memory database, right? It's not external to your application. How will you enable it? And for that, we need to do some settings. Now, luckily, Spring Boot has a concept of auto configuration and it will do the configuration for you. You just need to specify what you want. And the way you do that is by going to a resource. In this application.properties, you just need to set one property, which is spring.h2. Is it there? Yes. Dot console. You just need to say enable equal to true. That's it. That's the first thing you do. Now, you need to also mention the platform where you're working with. So you have to say spring data source dot platform and here you will mention h2 this is the platform you're working with and one more thing okay the last thing this is where you have to specify the url example when you want to work with any database of course you have to specify the url right and the way you do that is by saying spring dot data source dot url equal to now the url is jdbc colon h2 colon mem and now you can mention any database you want so i would say navin here but how will I access the database? Because if you are using MySQL, you have an external application to work with, right? Here, what you will do is you will just restart the application or relaunch it. And the way you can access your H2 database is very simple. Just go back to your browser. Uh, I will not be using Maven anymore. So I will just come back here and I would say, hey, I want to access my console. The way you do that is by saying localhost colon 8080 slash H2 hyphen console. You just have to say s2 hyphen console it will give you a login page now it will say driver name it will specify jdbc url now there is something which you have configured in your database right this is what uh, in the application this is what you have mentioned the username which is sa don't change username don't change the password because pass we don't need password there and simply click on test connection and you can see test successful right so you are ready to go ahead click on connect and this is where your database is now this is your database but you can see we don't have any tables yet and of course we want a table, right? But how will you get a table? Now to get a table, you need to enable JPA. And you can see we have not we, are, we have not configured JPA yet. Do we need to do that? Do we need to configure JPA? Uh, you just need to do one thing. In the annotation, you have to say at entity. And here you have to say at ID. This is, this is the thing we need, right? We have to specify that that's an entity and this is the ID. Now to also make it work, well, first of all, you have to import the package. Now to make it work, we also need some data in the table, right? If you have a table, of course, you should be having some blank data. Now Spring Boot will do will give it to you. Spring Boot will create a table for you. First of all, let me just relaunch it. Let's just verify it is working before adding any data. So if I go back to the browser and if I say refresh, connect. Oh, can you see that we got a table there? Awesome. We just said at entity and at ID, we got a table. That's the power of a Spring Boot. And that's the power of Spring Boot auto configuration. Now, we, let me just check if the data is there. So I will say select star from alien and I would say run. Oh, it's empty. You can see we got a table, but it is empty. I want to add some data. You can do it from here. Or if you want some data prehand, what you can do is you can create a separate data file. You can say new, I would say a file, simple file. And I will name this file as data.sql. So we got data.sql there and I will open that with, with a text editor. Okay, you can see we got this thing. Here you can write a statement to insert data. I mean, it's not compulsory, you can do it from the H2 as well. But every time you relaunch it, since this is a in-memory database, every time you relaunch the application, you might lose your data, right? So I would say insert into alien. I would say values, at least I want one data there. So I would say 101. And the name here I want is number, at least I want this data there. And after doing that, let me just relaunch it, just to verify if, it is, if data is coming there. I'll go back to browser. I will just simply copy this so that I will I don't have to type it again. I will refresh the database. I will say connect. You can see we got alien. If I say run this query, you can see that we got data. So your Spring Boot is actually loading that file at runtime. So you can write any, any number of uh, SQL statement you want if you want to have that database to work with. Now what I want is I want to add some data, right? More data, not from here, but from the page. So what I will do is from the home.jsp, 
I will click on submit, it will call add alien. But if you can see, we don't have any controller who will accept add alien. So let's create one. So I would say public string, I would say add alien. And from here itself, again, I will call the same home page. I don't want to create any other page. I will call the same home page. Of course, when you say fetch aliens, then you can, you know, create another page where you can display that data. And here I would say this should be called. So for that request mapping, and this should be called whenever you have a request for add alien. Now, since we are sending data there, now if you remember our uh, last concept of model object, we will simply say alien, alien here. So whatever data is coming from the client will be assigned here automatically. It's that beautiful, right? Okay, everything seems good. Everything seems good. But then how will you add data in database? If you remember, we need to write JDBC code, right? Or uh, in JPA or in Hypernet, we need to have a repository link. We have to create a, we have to create a separate code using which you can add. We will do that here as well. Normally what you do is we first create interface and then we create a class which implements that interface. So let's, let's create an interface first. So I would say new. I will not get a class as of now. Let me just create interface and I will call this as alien repo. Again, you can say alien DAO or repo doesn't matter. And I want this to be in telesco.com.telesco.demo.dao. This is where I want all my repositories and click on finish. Now this repository will have some methods, right? Which is normally we create, we apply CUD operations, right? We say create, update, delete and all those stuff. Now, since we are using data JPA, Spring Data JPA, it gives you this awesome feature. So just be with me to see the magic. What I will do is I will simply extend this interface with another interface called as called repository. And we will say, hey, you are responsible to work with alien and the primary keys of type integer. That's it. You just need to mention the class name and the type of primary key. You will get all the code operations. Now, how will, how it is working? So you can see if I click on code repository, we have save method, we have iterable. So all these methods are declared here. Oh, that means we need to define them. Hold on, we'll not do that. What I will simply do is I'm not see if you can see I'm just create, I've just created the interface. In this interface, it is already extending code code, into code repository, which has a lot of methods, and we are not implementing any method. In the alien controller, what I will do is I will simply create object of alien repo. I would say repo. I'm not creating a class. Okay. Nowhere I'm creating a class here, which implements the repository. And I will simply say auto wired because auto wired will, will instantiate it. It will look for the object of alien repository. And I have not created any class. I have not created any object. And that's the beauty of our spring boot, because if it is working, then Spring Boot is awesome, right? So let's try. In fact, there's a feature of, of Spring Data JPA. Let's try. I will relaunch the application. I'll go back to the browser and I'll refresh, say connect. Oh, first of all, I want to say select start from alien rust run. You can see we have only one data. And now I will try to add some more data. I would say 102. I would say plug in and I will click on submit. You can see submit has been done and we got the same page. Let's go back to database. Let's just to verify if it is working. Oh, it's not working. You can see we have still not added. Oh, because we have done one mistake, right? Even if I call add alien, you are not saving it, right? So you have to say repo.save alien. We missed one statement. How can I do that? Relaunch it. Go back to the browser and click on, I would say simply send the same request because in the URL we still have values. I would say enters. There is no error. Go back to the H2 run. I will just run. Oh, can you see that we got the second data? It's that easy, right? And if I show you the code once again, we have not done much, right? We have not written any JDBC code. This is the beauty about Spring REST. So what we have done is we have this home page from where when I click on submit, it goes to alien, add alien. This add alien is doing nothing much. It is fetching the value of the alien and it is saying repo.save. Now what is repo? Repo is the uh, reference for alien repo. An alien repo is an interface. We are not implementing this interface anywhere. Spring Data REST is responsible to do that for you. So behind the scene, there, there are some classes which is doing it for you, right? Because you don't have to think about much about it. And of course you can perform all the code operations, but what if you want to do something else? Now that's a question, right? We will try to answer that question in the, in the, in, in the coming videos, but then as, at this point, this is working for you. So you can save, you can fetch, you can update, you can delete, all the methods are available. Just try it by yourself and it should work. So in the POM file as well, we have not done any changes much. We just added the Tomcat Jasper. 
and here you just need to add these three things you have to enable your h2 you need to specify the platform and data source that's it or the which is the url that's it and this thing will work so if you have any question let me know in the comment section i, I hope you like that click on like button if you enjoyed it thank you so much for watching everyone